I've been a filmmaker for over 13 years now, traveling the world and making content for corporations, celebrities, and stories involving many cultures. Now, all of that has stopped as we are faced with a global pandemic. Coronavirus. The coronavirus. The COVID-19. is coronavirus. Here in New York, the number of coronavirus. Social distancing measures until the government believes COVID-19 is under control. Forced with having a stay-at-home order, I've decided to create a show that talks about professionals in their industry and how COVID-19 has impacted them. I hate being in front of the camera. I look rough and raw, but that's what this show is all about. Keeping it real and in fact, keeping it a buck. <laughs> what do you mean you don't follow the news? I make no money in bed. I'll tell it all Sex doctor herself. Hey! <laughs> Why are you? Crypto man, welcome to the show. Yeah, bro, what's good, man? <laughs> One and only Shadell Moore. One and only Ricky Platinum. Salute, my dad. Check in, check in. If you ain't been doing your goddamn history in the past goddamn 10 years, I go by the name Tony P. <laughs> Brides and grooms all over the world are canceling their wedding due to coronavirus. Instead, couples are thinking outside the box to have a quarantine wedding. America's coronavirus crisis is growing. To prevent the spread of the virus, she signed an executive order today canceling all events in the state with more than 250 people. Just a day after telling his country to relax, Donald Trump has declared the situation out of control. He's now insisting Americans avoid groups larger than 10 people. For this couple, Nazar and Joyce Scott decides to change their wedding day due to the pandemic. Found a little gazebo, nice and open. I mean, it was perfect. That literally was probably like a Saturday or a Sunday. Monday, the governor comes on and says, no public gatherings outside. <laughs> yeah. It's now illegal. After the governor, made, the governor made the announcement that he made, at that point, I'm saying, we have to wait. It's now it is illegal it would be illegal for us to be outside we'll see how joy and azar pan out in the results of changing up plans for their wedding please welcome i have joy and Nazar here with us today how y'all doing good. good how are you doing good man i can't complain i can't complain how did you guys meet you guys journey to, to actually pop in a question and, and decide that you guys want to marry each other? So we met working together. Um, I'm an accountant, she's an HR professional. Um, and we both worked at the NAACP. I actually still work there, she works somewhere else. But um, I remember seeing her, we actually worked on the same floor, probably four or five offices between us and um, she used to flirt with me at work. She never likes to acknowledge that, but you know, she walked past and be like, oh, the hallways always smells good because of my right. cologne. And you know, she was she was showing me some love. And and I returned it, right? I mean, I she was attractive. I definitely used to walk past her office probably more times than I needed to. Mm -hmm. um, and I always had an habit of when I walk into work, just, you know, saying good morning to all of my colleagues so that's just kind of how it started i mean because of our jobs we had to work together in uh in spots but yeah that's 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 how we met nice i'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll let her i'll let her pick up from there you know his story is a little off but we did <laughs> i started at the naacp um in 2000 january of 2018 mm -hmm. and um my boss at the time actually told me that there was a nice finance manager down the hall that was single <laughs> and you know i was single and you know she walked down and you know maybe told him that i was single mm -hmm. and at that point that's when <laughs> i started to say more to him you know i didn't flirt with him prior i was a new employee i wouldn't do that i was in hr so at that point you know we exchanged numbers and then the rest is history um, but th that is how we met at the NAACP. Well, that's, that's, that's the little dope story, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether, you know, 
you that fragrance from the hallway, and she smelled it, and she kept going by. Like, I was stick to that one. <laughs> so when did you guys decide that you wanted to, to get married? You know, the storyline is always a little off. He's going to say, I'm going to say way before. He's going to say way later, you know. He knew. I think he knew. He just don't want to admit it, but he knew. Like, he knew from the beginning. From the beginning? He knew. So hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? I mean, we can always look back at situations and say, oh, well, yeah, I would have did this, said that. So I, I say that to agree with her and, and say she's right. Um, unfortunately, at that time, you know, I'm, I was naive and, and, and not clearly seeing what it was I had in front of me. But I do agree with her. Now, today, us being in this spot, I can say, yeah. She's been solid. She's, yeah, I did know. Man, I can see that. I can see the big smiles on both of y'all faces. Like. Thank you. He, he, he proposed um, November. My birthday is December 1st. So we had this Virgo Sagittarius thing going on between us. And, and so he proposed. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're Virgo too? Uh-huh. Vir Virgos unite. Oh. Yep. So he proposed November 30th, the day we had, he had a dinner planned and, um, pictures that I thought we were just kind of taking, you know, photos and the last photo, he was like, one more thing. And then I saw him getting down and I'm like, ah! <laughs> no, no. So man, I, what I want to do is I want to toast to black love, man, because black love is beautiful. Yes. Right now. Yes. <laughs> so now I get into the wedding. Um, how long, um, did you guys, did it, did it take for you to, to plan the wedding before you knew this happened? You know, what did you have in mind for your wedding? So we, as our relationship progressed, we did kind of talk about the wedding. We talked about what our goals were when we first met as individuals, our goals were to purchase homes. Um, and so we never wanted to lose sight of that even coming together. Um, so we kind of had already planned out our wedding prior to us even getting engaged. Um, so once we got engaged, it was kind of like, let's put everything in motion. Um, so originally, his idea was a bigger wedding with a lot of family members, big party type of thing. And I've always been intimate and, you know, 50 people or less, maybe even 20, you know, let's just go away. So we had to merge that together. Originally, uh, we had a hall, we had a DJ, cater, everything was going to be about 50 people. Mm -hmm. um, and then it just changed. It had to, it had to change drastically. It had to change. Yeah. Yeah. We had always knew we didn't want to have a long engagement. That was something that we agreed on. I, I felt like the engagement time really should just be planning, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was it. You know, obviously when we met, now we're married, we live together. I've been living together for some time, but you know, there was other logistical things that had to be sorted out, right? I was living in Columbia at the time, so I had to get rid of my place and, and kind of move. And so we were able to get through, get through all of that. Um, we, she, she, she skipped to the end of the chase, which I can appreciate, but we had multiple conversations about what the wedding would be like outdoors, indoors, courthouse, tents. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, destination wedding we had multiple conversations um and 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 through that i think it became clear to us what was important right um a lot of my views honestly because men don't think about their wedding day <laughs> right we think about the woman we want to marry but a lot of my ideas were just based on traditions the type of weddings that i had been to and not necessarily what was important right um, and I think in the process of us having all the conversations that we had, us coming to, hey, so what's going to matter for us on our day, right? Because that's, that's really what this is about. What's, um, what's going to be memorable for us? Um, and so, yeah, in the midst of that, then you throw in COVID-19. So at what point did you guys actually decide, like, we can't have a public wedding and we just gonna have this quarantine wedding. It did. 
So his mind, I, not mine. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. We went to, this was at the point where in the state of Maryland, venues were all closed, right? So courthouse, any, nothing was an option. So this was mid-March. This was, this was mid-March. So, so at this point, we're like, where can we find, where, 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 what outdoor location can we find to do this wedding? And we went to Columbia. So add, add the piece that our, our marriage certificate was only for Howard, Howard County. County. Yeah, right. that's right. So we live in Baltimore City, right? But because the plans originally were for out there, that's where we had to get the marriage certificate. Yeah, so this limited right. us wow. completely at this point. That's right. Yeah. And so we end up going to a park, Lake Elkhorn, Elkhorn, Elkhorn in Columbia. Um, found a little gazebo, nice and open. I mean, it was perfect. That literally was probably like a Saturday or a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Monday, the governor comes <laughs> on and says, no public gatherings outside. <laughs> yeah. It's now illegal. And so to, 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 I give you that short bit to answer your question and say, at that point, uh -huh. I'm saying to her, we need to postpone it. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. One of, one of the solid plans that we had had was getting married at her aunt's house. Her aunt lives in Columbia, okay. but there were some issues with that. And so we kind of took that off the table. After the governor made the governor made the announcement that he made, at that point I'm saying we have to wait. It's now it is illegal. It would be illegal for us to be outside. That's what he thought. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't really illegal. So, you know? yeah. so so to answer your question, yeah, I mean I had gotten to that point. Up until then, I mean we were definitely on one accord. Like we had established the date of April the fourth. April fourth, that day had lots of meaning. Uh, to us, and we wanted that day to happen. Period. Um, but again, for me, I I essentially threw the towel in. Honestly, he, he moved on, and I had. I did. Yeah. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, uh, what can we do? Like, okay, we can't go outside because we can't have more than ten people gathered outside. Okay, so let's not do that. He was afraid to go outside at this point. I wasn't, but he was afraid. I ain't trying to run from the cops on my wedding day. And man. no <laughs> one was going to run from, their, from the cops. Like, I kept trying to tell him. And at this point, you know, I got really, at first, I'm very optimistic. So that's one of my traits. And so at this point, I, I had to start looking at the news more, reading up on COVID, trying to figure out what this what this virus is, where it comes from, because they were saying it was airborne, and oh, you, as soon as you walk outside, and it was on the shoes, and it was so many different things that I was like, let me inform myself about this. Let me become more knowledgeable about this. Um, the one issue that we had with having it at my aunt's is that she's a cancer survivor, so her immune system, and we didn't want right. to, you know, have her in a, in a position where she's infected or we bring something in that we don't know. And so that's why at that point we kind of just was like, we, we, we don't know what to do. We, we cannot. Um, my oldest brother is a pastor. So we had him, but we just didn't have a space at this point. Mm -hmm. So like we have someone that will, you know, officiate, but we have no space. What do we do? And so um, my aunt called and we had a heart to heart and she's like, okay, we have, to, we can't have 10 people. We just, we, we got to just cut it. Yeah. And I'm like, what? At that point, I think everything to me was like, okay, what really matters? Is the audience? Mm -hmm. Is it really, right. is it the audience that we're doing this for? Right. Is it for us? Like who, who really needs to be there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who, who does this really like, how, like what really matters? Mm -hmm. So we called our moms and my mom and his mom and we're like, just y'all, we're going here, let's do it. And that's what we did. Our kids didn't even come. Um, but then I'm like, well, we can still have everybody watch. Like, so now I'm like Googling, like what's the best, you know, live stream. And, and so that's how we got Periscope and so so how do you feel about how, well, how do your like your family and, and friends feel about the quarantine? Because I know like for some people, the day days, and uh -uh, it's like, nah, man, I want to come to the wedding, man. Hey, forget this coronavirus, man. We trying to turn up. What do you say to like people like that, that just want to have fun and, and and enjoy your wedding at the at the end of the day? So, so a lot of our a lot of our friends were happy. 
um, and they understood. A lot of, given the circumstance, people were really understanding. There's about a handful of people that were like, really? Like, that's what you did? Like, and I mean, my brothers included, I'm super close with them. And so to not be able to have them, they were devastated. Um, but I had to explain, like, listen, I'm, you know, I'm really sorry. Given it any other time, you would have been front and center. Um, but this day, this this is what it meant. It, it was truly about our union and, and joining into one, uh, making it about our love. And we will still turn up, you know, because I didn't get to wear my dream dress. He, he wasn't able to wear his tux. We weren't able to get the alterations done or anything. So we had these outfits, you know, we still have a haul. We still have everything mm -hmm. reserved. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to move it to a later date and we will. And and so I think that at our one year anniversary, you know, next year, we will be able to have our dream wedding. Explain to me um, and the viewers um, how you guys feel with, you know, being in quarantine as newlyweds. I was devastated that we couldn't go away because that for me that was time to connect with him as his wife you know as a first time wife as his wife um and you know you buy all these outfits and stuff thinking that you're gonna go away and 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 so i wasn't able we weren't able to go away i think the good piece is that the kids were gone for like that week um what we have been trying to do uh is really be intentional about staying connected mm -hmm. so although we have work and you know now the kids are back and stuff like that um when we don't have them we try to cook dinner mm -hmm. do light some candles mm -hmm. you know do something romantic in the living room or upstairs mm -hmm. or um try not like let's not be on our phones let's watch a movie tonight let's watch four movies tonight on netflix let's you know let's really connect and and try to have our time since we we didn't have a honeymoon yeah i think it's been um it's been a mixed bag for me on one end um you know she's just starting a job my job is pretty demanding and so on one end during quarantine, being able to be home, be close with her. At one point, we were both in the living room working. That was good, right? Um, until that's, it wasn't. That's the, right, that was good until it wasn't. Uh, but then the bad is everything that she's been saying, right? Wanting to go away, official honeymoon. Of course, these things will happen, right? Um, the timing of it is just going to be uh, a, little, a little off. Overall, I think... Um, being in the house, being near her is, um, it's been really enjoyable. Um, I mean, I've gotten cabin fever, but if I was home by myself, I'd have cabin fever, right? So I guess it, it, it becomes a little easier to manage, you know, when you got someone here. Let's just toast to that, man. Black love, good health, <laughs> and, and all the above, man. So. I was working out. I should say that. Okay. I have, a, I have a shout out to Planet Fitness. I was getting up Monday through Thursday, four in the morning. He was. Right? Religiously. Okay. And, um, you know, obviously they closed the gyms, so I figured I'll eat a little ice cream while we're in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back. I'll get back. Though. I'll get back once they open up again. Right. So our experience as a quarantine wedding nurse, <laughs> were you guys living together before the pandemic? And has anything changed as far as your living situation? So excellent question, right? Excellent question, my man. We were not living together. I was uh, living in Columbia at the time. And um, right before I, I proposed to her the last week in November, um, I had moved in probably the first week of November. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've been living together at least uh, since then. The question that you asked, I think is a good one because for us and our relationship, um, communication, affection, all of that is something that we've always been conscious of. It's something that we daily work on, to be quite honest with you. Um, not something that I would say has been heightened because of COVID. I think it's always been there, right? Um, and so, you know, I think the one thing that maybe COVID presents is being in the house, being more, we get to practice it more, right? You don't have your typical day-to-day -day routine, which is we're getting up, you know, we're leaving, we're going to work, we're talking throughout the day, 
you know, on the way home, we're getting kids, it's dinner, it's all of that, it's all of the family stuff. Of course, COVID has changed that dynamic, but um, I would say being here, having closer access to her, right, being in the same house, I think it's been better for us. I think it has at least presented us the opportunity to improve our communication, to be more lubby-dubby with each other. She's talked about things like, you know, the other night she made dinner and she had candles in the room. Um, I guess about a week ago, I did something similar in the living room, had the fireplace on. And so, yeah, I think COVID in a sense gives you more opportunities to do stuff like that. I'm hoping people are taking advantage. Yeah, that's the um, key. I hope they're taking advantage of that. Um, Cause you know, life can have you all over the place, man. Whether you're in a relationship or not, depending on what you're doing, you could be all over the place. And so, giving that attention to who, whoever your significant other is sometimes can be hampered. I think COVID in a sense has slowed things down, right? Mm -hmm. It slowed things down. It's allowed us to pay more attention to what's important to us. What is one thing you guys are eager to do once they let us out this quarantine? Mm. That's a good question. One thing we're eager to do. I am eager to go to Home Goods, tar <laughs> like just TJ Maxx. I can go to Target, but TJ, like I'm just, I'm, I'm eager to home shop. I love home shopping, so I'm eager to get out there now together. Hmm. I'd say honeymoon. Yeah. Here recently, we were talking. We were looking at some package deals to get away. I think getting on a plane. Mm. I'll answer your question like that. Getting on a plane, we're eager to do. Given that you guys had a quarantine wedding. And you know you, you couldn't have physical um, um, guests come to your wedding or whatever. Um, we still didn't get to see the uh, the lip portion of your wedding, like you know the reception and everybody dancing and thing like that. So the question is, what would your song, your first song, your first dance of the song would be, and whatever song that is, can we see you guys do the first the first dance? First song. You gotta respond to me, right? We gotta we gotta respond together. Oh, Anita all of me. Anita, oh, Anita, 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 yeah. Angel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're not saying I that. mean, okay, my bad. Yeah. I said all of me. That's your song. Yo, we gotta Anita, you want us to dance. Anita Baker, Angel. That's that's the song. Mm -hmm. That's the song. Yeah, and I would love to see at least maybe 20 seconds of you guys doing your first <laughs> dance. Cool. Cool. You know, cue the cue the song up. You know. We we doing it, man. Just keep it a buck, man. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, just sweatpants. <laughs> when you think you was gonna see our bottom? I did. I did. I got on jeans. He got on his blue sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ain't Yeah, Angel would definitely be the first song for sure. Man, look, man, I appreciate y'all for coming on and sharing y'all story, y'all journey from transitioning y'all wedding to a quarantine wedding. And man, you guys came on and, you know, you shared your information, man. I, I appreciate y'all. And this toast to that, man. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for having us, bro. I appreciate oh, it, he's man. Done, he's done his drink. I'm sorry, yeah. I've been sipping throughout forgive me so i appreciate y'all thank y'all so much thank all right yeah. Yeah.